Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're focusing on the sun. We have a notable earthquake and a paper solidifying some key magnetic science to cover, but the big story today is unquestionably our star. Big guns are on the Earth-facing disk and turning towards the Earth. This morning, an M5 solar flare erupted along with a powerful coronal mass ejection. It may clip Earth, but the bigger concern is for the days ahead. We have plasma filaments all over in this coronal hole pumping solar wind our way, but let's take a peek at the eruptive behavior over the last day and into this morning. It's easy to see why the CME signatures on coronagraph showed such big bursts while the sunspot went around the far side. That field setup is chaotic and complex. This morning's M5 event was a two-component flare and eruptive sequence, which we're also going to watch in umbral field detail in 171 angstroms. Only careful eyes are going to spot it. An arc appears connecting across the region in the middle high corona, and that is the flare trigger. It destabilized the upper fields, causing them to collide, and when plasma surging to relativistic speeds collide, solar flare X-ray explosions occur. Coronagraph here is young, and the next few hours will show if a small glancing blow to Earth is coming in the next couple of days, but it would be minor. The bigger concern is that the sunspots are turning in to face the Earth. We have a southern active region born 48 hours ago, and the elder established spots belting out the big eruptions from the north. So far, we have continued spread and growth, but a lack of central umbral development on the south. If this active region was not just stretching, but developing more of the spots in the middle, it would already be having the strength to do that flaring. But up north, multiple components, all connected by umbral and coronal fields. These will be turning more towards the Earth all this week. Solar Watch is live. Quick seismic note up next, 6.3 in Afghanistan, shallow, blood echo nearby four days beforehand, and despite the relative remoteness of the area, 20 deaths have been reported with considerable damage to infrastructure and several other injuries. Today's top science article hits the loss of the magnetic field. Hypomagnetic health risks to cellular proliferation, nervous system function, oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species levels, DNA integrity, outcomes often dependent on specific field intensity, frequency, and lengths of exposure. Low field exposure has also been shown to affect bacterial behavior in the human microbiome. Once again, the weakening of Earth's magnetic field impacts everything. Tickets overall are half gone for the winter tour. Basically, I'm going to do most of the thinking on prepping for Earth's disaster cycle so you can just take off like a rocket. Not like we have all the time in the world to pull off this prepping. Link below. Observer speed dating this coming weekend. Hopefully we get as many matches made among like-minded observers as last time. August Dunning coming in for the premiere and final pole shift conference of the year, mid-month. Holiday times follow. Rookie year of the Observer Ranch is coming to a close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.